for many kinds of cancer therapy, and we focus on leukemia, but it's true for most kinds of cancer, is that you get diagnosed, you get treated, it looks like the disease goes away, and then it comes back. And the age-old question is, why did it come back? Uh, what kind of a cell you know, survived therapy and had the ability to regrow the disease? What nobody has really done in the field is to ask, in which cells are these genetic changes occurring in? In other words, what kinds of cells are bearing the differences uh, in a, in a, in a, between relapse and diagnosis? Uh, most people who get acute myeloid leukemia have, let's say, 10 mutations in their leukemia cells. But if we look at the normal stem cells, we can find stem cells that have one or two uh, mutations or three mutations. And so that's allowed us to order the sequence of mutations that have to happen in the process of how a, a leukemia starts. So this is like the ancestral stepping stones that got you into the clinic. So we can sample that in the blood sample. And we're asking, does leukemia, does relapse come from those kinds of cells? Because they're there, you know, in a person who walks into the clinic. So they're a possible feed source for leukemia. Is it within the leukemia bulk cells themselves that there's some cell in there that has properties that allow it to survive or not? Or is it in the stem cells of the leukemia? So we did all these three. Now with this study, for the first time, we've been able to marry together the genetic analysis with stem cell analysis. So we can identify at the level of stem cells the kind of genetic diversity we call it, the kind of gene, or the mutational burden that each of these stem cells are, are carrying, but then how they're related to each other. The most exciting thing about this is that we can combine knowledge of stem cell biology and genetics. Soon we'll have the kind of biomarker where somebody comes into the clinic, they get a set of quite quick and quite um, inexpensive, relatively inexpensive tests uh, that we'll be able to tell whether or not they're going to respond to the standard kinds of therapy. Uh, and if not, what we hope for is that that will lead to clinical trials of new kinds of upfront, uh, we call it induction chemotherapy. So I'm John Dick, and I'm a senior scientist at the Princess Margaret Cancer Center.